is a hidden world buried beneath our beach towels and squishing up between our toes. There, writhing and wiggling between the grains of sand, shells, and mud, life and death plays out on an epic scale. Looking at a scoop of sand is like going to an Africa savanna. You have predators, you have grazers, you have animals of different sizes, a huge species diversity. So you have this whole big ecosystem in this really tiny uh, scoop of sand. We call these miniature beasts myofauna, and we know next to nothing about them. No one has ever collected myofauna in this area. So what we are trying to do first is just to have an idea of what we can find. The work Maria and her colleagues are doing is creating a foundation that other types of research can then build off of. It's a very pristine area. We are very used to work in places where there is a lot of disturbance by humans, like there is a lot of um, there is pollution or there is like a lot of um, construction related to the sea. And Calvert could be like a chance to find what were the original species that were here before humans started to mess up. So the group of mayofauna I'm interested in uh, are called mayofaunal flatworms or free-living flatworms. Typically they slide or they glide between the grains of sand. We don't really know what exactly their main food sources are, but they are usually top predators. I collect my organisms typically by going to the beach and um, collecting some sediment. I will then extract the mayofauna and then study them alive under the microscope. Uh, you can see two little eyes here, so this is the head, this is the tail part. Maria studies a bizarre and understudied group of myofauna called mud dragons. Mud dragons live from tropics to polar regions and we don't know exactly what is their role in the food chain, but uh, we know that they graze on bacteria so they might control the populations. One of the things that keeps exciting me is go out to a beach that has never been sampled before, look into the microscope and have the potential to look at two, three, maybe four new species of science. Just knowing that you're probably the first person uh, ever to look at this animal is, is for me still quite a thrill. Yeah. And also because we are having better techniques to have access to this small world. And the more we discover, the more interesting it gets. The trick is to stay ahead of the curve. Marine disturbances are probably causing some myofauna to go extinct faster than they can be studied. Myofauna are great indicators for um, the, the study of the marine health. Just because they are stuck in the sediment, they cannot move. If there is any disturbance, they will stay there and they will suffer it. Yeah, and if mayofauna are impacted, then um, that impact moves up the food chain and because mayofauna are one of the most basic elements of that food chain. So if we study them, absence, presence, biodiversity, we could work on assessing what is the quality of the environment. So people tend to focus on the big things and the big animals, animals that they can see with the naked eye, but they normally um, overlook these tiny ones and they are as important as, as the big ones. It's amazing that you can study something that no one can see. They walk in the beaches thinking that they are empty places, like there's no life there and just in a handful of sand you have so many different groups. It's just amazing to just see the wonders of nature in that small scale. <laughs> <laughs>